So you may have noticed now in the case of left and right-handed vial spinners, the left and the right-handed vial spinners took up all of the space of the complex quaternions. However, in the case of SU and SD, SU and SD did not take up the entire space, the entire 64-dimensional space of the Clifford algebra CL6, which was generated by the complex octonions. So you might wonder, is there a better way to use up all of the space of this Clifford algebra CL6? So here's our Clifford algebra CL6, which is 64 complex dimensional. This is generated by the complex octonions. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to split this space into two pieces. So the pieces are going to be things of the form A, where this is any element out of this algebra, multiplied onto a projector P, where this P is defined to be 1 plus i e7 over 2. And the bottom space is just going to be any element multiplied onto P star, the complex conjugate of this. So the next thing we can do now is we can identify SU3 generators in these spaces. So it so happens that there's eight SU3 generators of this form in the top half space. So those are going to generate SU3 color. And there's an analogous set of eight in the bottom here. Now what we want to do is we want to take these generators and apply them to the rest of the space. So when we apply these generators to the rest of the space, we find that the top half space breaks down as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We find six singlets under SU3. And in the bottom half space, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 singlets in the bottom half space. And then again here in the bottom, we find that we get 1, 2, 3, 4, five triplets. In the top half space, we find we get one, two, three, four, five triplets under SU3. So you'll notice again that uh, particles and antiparticles are related again simply by the complex conjugate. So these two spaces are related by the complex conjugate, and that's how we match particles and antiparticles. So finally, it turns out that we've got one more antitriplet left over here. And there's one triplet that shows up over here. So I'm not sure if you see immediately what this is. Let's compile a list of what we have here. So if I add up all the triplets that we have, there's five triplets down here, and there's one triplet up here. So we have six triplets under SU3. Those are the SU3 representations we would expect for the up, down, charm, strange, top, and bottom quarks. Then there are five antitriplets here and one antitriplet here. So we have six antitriplets in total, which correspond to the, the SU3 representations that we would expect for the anti-up, anti-down, anti-charm, anti-strange, anti-top, and anti-bottom quarks. Then there are six singlets here, which is what we would expect for three neutrinos and the electron, the muon, and the tau. And then finally, there's another six singlets, which is what we would expect for all of the anti-leptons. Okay, so we started with the complex octonions. We had them act on themselves repeatedly. This generated a 64 complex dimensional space, which is the Clifford algebra CL6. 
Within that algebra, we were able to identify SU3 generators. And we used those SU3 generators to act on the rest of the space. We then found that the rest of the space broke down into exactly the SU3 representations we would expect for three full generations of quarks and leptons.